Well, Kurt Schilling's at it again. The conversation you're having about the, uh, the things he said about the 10-year-old girl, to yeah. me, is the very, at the very heart of why this is a problem. How, how many times, and I, I have three boys and a daughter, how many times have you looked at a young man and said, wow, is he gonna be, he's a beautiful young man. Wow, he's a gorgeous young man. And that man was 12, 13, 14, 15. I'll be honest, or he's a beautiful, Kurt, what, zero. Yeah. I've never now, that's him. This was the former pitcher defending Donald Trump when the former president said this of a 10-year-old. Thursday night, you're going up the escalator? I'm gonna be dating her in 10 years, can you believe it? Gross, abhorrent comments. Thus, Schilling tried to show loyalty on cable news. I have boys, my youngest son is a gorgeous young man, and I've heard women say, wow, he's a beautiful young boy. To jump to the point where you're, you're insin insinuating like something like pedophilia or a mo molestation is where you're going with this because he's joking about, well, when she gets older, I'm going to date her. I mean, how do you get from there to being revolted and disgusted? Yeah, you know, I, I don't look at a young boy and say, in 10 years, I'm going to date him. Uh, well, we don't, I, but you I, don't I actively don't. look and, for and that. And I think that would be pretty sad. Look at how ticked he is because someone dared to go against the 45th president. He is fuming. This would not be the first time Schilling has shown a lack of care for women while stumping for an insurrectionist. At the Gettysburg Address over the weekend, he goes after the, he raises the subject of the women who've accused him of various things and says, I'm gonna sue him. You're a Trump supporter. Are you exasperated about this? No, no, I'm not exasperated. I, I wish we, we were talking about the subjects uh, uh, and the subject matter uh, of the 26 to 28 uh, different policies he had laid out for his first 100 days. But yes. Given the fact that he did that, uh, and that, and the media takeaway was the headline you just gave tells me as much as I need to know about where we're at with the media. Attacking the media over. The media is going to go after him no matter what. And over. There wasn't a media dead set against one candidate like we have now. And over. He's not a politician. He's never been a career politician, which is why he is so different than the establishment and why the establishment hates his guts. Mm -hmm. And the media is complicit in all of this. And over again. Uh, I, I, I really am honestly uh, uh, immune to the effects of the uh, mainstream media. You know, but the, the Disney has embraced this. That's the, the thing that I don't get. Disney, which p posits itself as a, as a family first group, uh, is embracing this, this left wing, and again, violent uh, uh, group of people that uh, that continue to espouse very uh, racist driven agendas. Why do, you why do you say violent? Well, if you look at what Antifa is doing. First, weird and unfounded pivot, Kurt. Second, the reason he hates ESPN, because he previously worked for the worldwide leader. However, in 2016, Schilling was fired for posting an offensive meme in regards to the North Carolina bathroom bill, which wouldn't be the first time he's posted stuff like this. He compared Muslims to Nazis with imagery that a person like Donald Trump, per many media reports, keeps the speeches of by his bedside. He railed against evolution, putting him in good company with that dude that's running for Senate in Georgia. During an interview on a Kansas City radio station, Schilling said Hillary Clinton should be, quote, buried under a jail somewhere, in reference to Clinton's so-called email scandal. I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. Schilling's claims the massacre at Stoneman Douglas High School was a hoax peddling in conspiracy theories of paid crisis actors. He has peddled in the schmooshman on conspiracy theory because, hey, how can you not at this stage of Trumpism, am I right? He used racist dog whistles while defending the January 6th insurrection and the Capitol rioters. Anybody associated with the Nazi party, anybody associated with white nationalism, anybody associated with racism, isn't on the right. Oh no. On his Breitbart show, Schilling did an episode with white supremacist Paul Nealon, an anti-Semite who claimed he would dethrone Paul Ryan. Schilling repeatedly praised Nealon's policies. Schilling also agreed with Nealon that the allegations against Roy Moore were totally fabricated an absurdity of a society that believes the woman over the man. He's also did you know this? A huge collector of Nazi memorabilia. Why? How? Why would you do this? I think immigration is a direct 
impact, a direct influencer on all the things that I care about, from the economy to jobs to national security to terrorism. When ex-Orioles outfielder Adam Jones said he had racial slurs thrown his way at Fenway Park, alluding to it being the worst encounter of fan abuse he'd experienced in his career, Schilling, the man who proclaims to hate racism, immediately, without hesitation, called Jones a liar and said, I think this is somebody creating a situation. He added, his words, for some reason, it appears blacks believe only blacks can talk about racism and only whites can be racist. So when I see Kurt Schilling bash student debt relief, a small, minuscule move when clearly all should be forgiven, I consider the history of this putrid man. First, this. Schilling started a video game company in Massachusetts called 38 Studios. In 2010, Rhode Island lured away the company by dangling $75 million in taxpayer-backed loan guarantees. The company ultimately produced just one game, a single game, before going bankrupt in 2012. Rhode Island taxpayers ate the $75 million. After crying poverty, 38 Studios settled with the state of Rhode Island. In 2016, the company agreed to pay $2.5 million to the state in order to settle claims it had defrauded taxpayers. Off the bat, Schilling is shown to be a hypocrite, however. He swindles while kids suffer. That's Kurt Schilling's game. When it comes to defrauding people, Kurt is an ace. He held a board seat on Steve Bannon's Fugazi border wall group, one that defrauded donors of funds gathered to construct Donald Trump's border wall along the southern border. One-time Trump campaign manager Steve Bannon was one of four men indicted by a federal grand jury in Manhattan for working to defraud hundreds of thousands of donors in relation to the nonprofit per the prosecutors. 